Hey everybody, so welcome to this year's Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I go through and give my honest opinions about new cool tools that I have seen out there and give you my honest opinion about what I think about them. These are not sponsored or promotionals or any other thing out there. This is just me honestly reaching out and figuring out what this tool is all about and sharing my insights in case that would be interesting to you. And if you haven't seen one of these before, I'm reaching almost 50 different honest reviews at this point. So if you don't see the tool in the lineup this year, make sure you check out the playlist down below and up above to see if I have reviewed the tool that you are looking for. And today we are going to be reviewing, yeah, that one. And as with all of these videos, my honest opinion is summarized at the very end of this video. All right, so with all of that said, let's go get started. Hi everyone, my name is Pavel Mikhailov and I'm the product manager slash product owner of GraphDB at Ontotext. And I've been at the company for 15 years now. I went through many different roles. I was a software developer, team leader, architect. I'm still programming, even though I'm not supposed to, but I like it and sometimes it's necessary. So that's why I'm doing it. Nice. And well, and today, I think that that's how you you get a better understanding of the tool too, right? Because you kind of know how it works behind the scenes. Yeah. So, and when you're the product owner, uh, it really helps if you know the product and I know it inside and out. So, yeah. And we're going to see that today, right? So I'm I'm so excited. I did not realize that you had worked at uh, Onto Text for so long. So now I'm even more intrigued mm -hmm. on what, what you like have I like to say when, when new people come to the company and they ask me what I do, I usually smile and I say I'm part of the furniture because I moved office <laughs> like four times. So, uh, nice. yeah. <laughs> well, you, you have uh, some legacy knowledge too to, to add to the mix. That's great. Uh, today I'm going to show you something in GraphDB that um, has to do with large language models and specifically ChatGPT. And I know the world is crazy about that right now. So <laughs> uh, I promise it will be interesting because uh, actually the basis of all that is um, RDF and uh, semantic technologies that we are using GraphDB. And one of the problems with RDF is that if you're kind of new to RDF, or even if you are not that new and you understand the technology well, it's sometimes difficult to get the information that you know might be there in the database, uh, but there is no easy way to uh, find that information unless okay. you're really skilled with Sparkle. And even if you're skilled, it might still be tricky to find exactly the right query to write to get the information you want. That's a common complaint for those that are um, wanting to use graph data, uh, I, I've heard this so many times from the engineers that I've worked with. Uh, they're like, oh, I got to use Sparkle. I got to learn Sparkle. I love when we can get around that <laughs> because that's a big blocker for a lot of folks. Yeah. And if you've used ChatGPT before, you know that you can simply ask questions in any way you mm -hmm. feel like, just like talking to a person and it just mm -hmm. for some magical reason works and you get amazing answers back. And we want to do the same here, but uh, instead of relying on ChatGPT's general knowledge about the world and what it's been um, trained on, we wanted to use the data that's stored in GraphDB. This could be, for example, your uh, proprietary company data or um, any kind of data that uh, the general GPT model doesn't know anything about or doesn't know enough about. And so and in this use case, you're using the knowledge graph to kind of do some structured grounding to the chat GPT or whatever other LLM stuff you might be using um, so that it understands more about your space. Yes, uh, in a way, yeah, but it goes uh, a bit further than that. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, when you ask something, it will uh, extract the information from the database in order to right. uh, find the information that it needs to sort of chew on, summarize, and present to you in a human readable manner. And I've already prepared a data set. This data set we use for several of our examples in the documentation. It contains uh, data from Star Wars converted to RDF. So if you're new to RDF, it's a really good way to start learning more about RDF because it's things you know about. Uh, just like um, ChatGPT, for example, I can ask it um, to restore, look, or And you don't have to care about spelling, uh, capital letters, any of that, just be, just the way you do it with um, uh, GPT. And 
Now it says Han Solo is taller. Uh, he's uh, 180. That's centimeters, by the way. And now I, if I'm one of those metrically challenged folks from the US, <laughs> I could ask, um, what's that in feet? Yeah. And when it takes longer, that's because the the model. Um, what's that? Okay. So it's I'm happy that this happens because sometimes. Um, when you ask something into its GPT, it will get confused and uh, mm -hmm. you never get the same answer twice. You might get the same information, but in not exactly the same way. So I can try asking in a different way, what's... Uh, um... Funny, now we decided to go really uh, detailed about how to convert <laughs> uh, centimeters to, um, to feet. And as you can see, it says, 5.91 and I can now be really nagging and say no I actually meant feet and inches because that's what you usually um, ask for when you ask how tall someone is yeah. and there you go and it also provides uh, some information about other people because of everything that happens behind the scenes it uh, got some information regarding other people that wasn't in the original question, but you got it anyway. So it's not a perfect solution. But the important bit here is that you got the answers that you asked for. Just the fact yeah. that you got something extra doesn't really matter. You know, traditionally when you're doing this with a graph, um, is the reason that it's maybe getting confused in the in the beginning, I mean, obviously there's a lot of parameters and things that go into the LLMs and, and what you're doing with it, but um, is it because in your knowledge graph, there is height that refers to character and then there's other things like, you know, that measurement for vehicles and starships? Is that why, and maybe possible confusion, uh, that it's something with your attributes that you're using in your uh, graph or is that something else? Why it produced uh, the answers for Shmi Skywalker and uh, whoever rules Star Pulse is or... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because in order to find as much information that's relevant, regardless of the way you spell things, um, it gets more than necessary to answer the question. And once the conversation keep going on and on, um, it sort of gets uh, quite a lot of context. And sometimes that context may be confusing because all of this is a single conversation. If I click mm -hmm. this... Um, bucket I can hear, I can clear it and start again, and it will not uh, use any of the information that uh, it's already seen. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the question I'm asking is, how much of the data that we're looking at right now is actually in your graph versus something that's just coming from the LLM? Uh, all of it is in the in the graph. And you might be wondering, because it's Star Wars and you're, haha, <laughs> This is something that GPT knows about. So if I ask GPT about those things, I should get similar answers. You might get similar answers, but I doubt that it would tell you uh, things like 180 and 172. <laughs> and because I knew you were going to ask that, I'm going to show you uh, later another data set that um, uses different data that's definitely not something GPT knows about. Okay, cool. So let's try another question here. For example, um, is Luke's planet warm? So in order to derive this information, it first has to find out what that planet is and then get the data for that planet. Because in the data store in the database, there is no such thing that says uh, Luke's planet has whatever. And when it takes time, yep, it found out that uh, the planet is Tatooine. It's described as arid in the database. And then it knows. Now, this is general GPT knowledge that an arid climate typically refers to a dry desert-like environment. But this part, this bit that looks uh, home planet is Tatooine and it being uh, having an arid climate, that's the information that we got from the database. Um, so if I am, I'm trying to fit it into like the user journey a little bit. So I don't want to necessarily mess with Sparkle to get answers right now. Um, so I come here and I talk to my graph. How do I then use this? Okay, so GraphDB has usually an RDF graph behind the scenes, or I know you can like connect the other ones that are out there on the web that, you know, if you license those. Um, I'm assuming you can do that with a vector database now from what you just said, or is that not accurate? 
Yeah, so uh, just um, to tell you how it works, it uses, um, you might have heard about the GraphDB connectors before. Mm -hmm. If you have not they are a way to integrate GraphDB with um, third-party systems such as Lucene yep. or Elasticsearch. Mm -hmm. And together we talked to your graph, we introduced this called ChatGPT Retrieval, yeah. okay. which allows you to create, um, describe the model of the documents that you want to create from your RDF data. And then it will um, gather that data whenever there are changes uh, in GraphDB, construct text documents, and then index them in a vector database. And that's so how it works. if you have a lot of different fields um, in your data set, is there a different UI element to set something like this up? Or is there like a bulk load that you can do that kind of populates this? Because I'm just thinking like, this might be uh, good for Star Wars, but like if you have something that's very large, it might be yeah, kind of Yeah, okay, so I think it might be time to move to the next um, next demo. Before we move off, look, if I've had so many times where someone's like, I just need to figure out, do we have this thing? And I have to say, uh, hold on, let me go like, figure out the Sparkle query for that thing. Um, and it takes so much time um, if I'm not familiar with the thing that they're asking for. So I will say, like, even outside of, you know, putting it in production and is there like, you know, all these other things that I was just asking about, this is a great hack, right? Like, meaning I, as the knowledge worker, probably sitting here, like trying to get a quick answer to a salesperson who's maybe on a call at that very minute with a customer or with, you know, a regulatory body or something, this is going to be very, very key. So I want to highlight that is is very important in and of itself. Uh, I'm going to switch to the other repo now. And if we look at the settings, uh, we see that this part is the same, but mm -hmm. here we have something extra. And mm -hmm. this is a way to provide some ground truths to um, the talk to your graph functionality so that it has a bit of a context about the data. Mm -hmm. important, important things that because obviously the open AI model doesn't know uh, today's date. Mm -hmm. So if you ask relative things, what happened in the past year, it gets very confused. So it helps if you say today is, and this will be replaced with the actual date. So let's ask, um, what is the data about? And here we get, uh, it wouldn't work with the other example I showed you because I didn't provide any ground truths there, but here I provided them. So it knows that the data is about Acme. It's an IT company. It makes software for the animation industry. It contains information about the employees and the products of the company. And it also mm -hmm. gives the company website. And as you can see, it gave me back quite a bit of information. Mm -hmm. uh, she's one of the founders. Uh, again, telling me what the company does, uh, tells me when she, that she started her role as CEO in 2018, her email address and her date of birth. Normally you wouldn't have those things uh, in like publicly queryable data, but yeah. for the sake of example, I have them here. So, so they're not, uh, you're not seeing a lot of hallucinations happen with it. Well, sometimes it may happen, but uh, it uses kind of, a, I think, 0 0.7 as a temperature. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, oh, I remember you asked also, how could you integrate this and use an API or something like that, uh, which I didn't answer. Uh, for the time being, the only way to use this is through this interface in the workbench, mm -hmm. simply because it's... Um, in my opinion, very, very experimental. But we do plan to um, develop it further and maybe in the future provide API access that you can cool. use to integrate in whatever. Yeah, I, I, that would be great too because um, I know in previous versions of, of GraphDB, um, you've been able to save queries um, and, you know, make almost like an endpoint off of that so that if somebody doesn't know Sparkle or doesn't know your graph, they can still call that and, and get the information that they need. I feel like this is the leveling up of that same kind of functionality where, you know, now you don't even, you know, need to, to do that effort. You um, talk to your graph, maybe it generates the, the endpoint or the query for you, and then you can give that to whoever in your organization needs it without having to, you know, get into GraphDB and, you know, do all the things you need to do in here. Also, another and, thing to mention, it's uh, this functionality is also in GraphDB free, so you don't need any kind of license to try it out. Cool. 
That's awesome. So if people want to go and kick the tires on this thing and really see what it can do, yeah. um, I, I love that, that that you're allowing that. Um, that's another reason why I like GraphDB is you, you're just like, yeah, go go try it out. Go, it, It's free. I mean, not the whole thing, but, you know, the things that you need to kick the tires are at least, you know, out there for you to use. Um, so, I mean, I know, again, this is experimental, but there, it doesn't seem like there's any way for me to kind of like save my chat and maybe share it with someone else or well, even download it from my um, own. Other than copy pasting, which would work. Yeah. Uh, there is no way to do it, but mm. it's a great idea. So maybe we could um, put a button here that allows you to, I mean, you probably mean the same as you can do in uh, chat GPT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that, for example, this GraphDB works on my computer here, so uh, it doesn't have access to any server where it can store things. But um, I'll write this down, and we might put this at some point. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I guess, um, you know, again, it's experimental, so maybe this is just a discussion of what's possible. Um, but, you know, when it does get into the hallucination space, um, how... Because a lot of the scholarship is describing uh, the knowledge graph is good for helping with those hallucinations. And so if you start to see them and you are using your graph, I think that that's maybe a good indicator that there's something goofy in your graph, or maybe your graph isn't up to date on something, right? Because that's the other yeah. um, reason a graph is helpful with LLMs is the graph is supposed to be um, easier to update um, because you're not doing these massive like retrainings that an LLM would need. So therefore, you know, it can use the graph to, to help with, um, newer data that it might not know from, from the LLM side of things. Um, so maybe that's another reason, like if you're going through this and you're starting to see hallucinations and weird things, it might be that, Hey, my graph isn't getting updated. Like I thought, or it maybe needs to have a faster update speed now that we have LLMs in the mix. So I think that's, it's kind of a cool troubleshooting um, exercise uh, for if you are using your knowledge graph with the LLMs. 